from The New Yorker alleging for the first time that the superstar called 911 to report alleged abuse the night before that dramatic court testimony. We'll speak to the reporters in a moment, but first, Kaylee Hartung has the latest. Good morning, Kaylee. Hey, good morning, Eva. She never had a chance. That's how one source described the circumstances of the hearing that put Britney under this conservatorship 13 years ago. Now, a new in-depth investigation with sources from Britney's inner circle, it sheds new light on what the New Yorker calls the conservatorship nightmare Britney's been living under. This morning, new details revealed about the conservatorship Britney Spears has been living under for more than a decade. In a new article in The New Yorker, Pulitzer Prize-winning author Ronan Farrow and co-author Gia Tolentino writing that just hours before Britney's bombshell 20-minute statement in court two weeks ago, the pop star called 911 to report she was a victim of conservatorship abuse. They write that night members of Spears' team began texting one another frantically. They were worried about what Spears might say the next day, and they discussed how to prepare in the event that she went rogue. It was at that court hearing where fans finally got to hear from the 39-year-old herself, passionately describing to a judge how she says she's been isolated, exploited, embarrassed, and demoralized by the conservatorship that's controlled her life and finances for the last 13 years, asking that it be terminated. A conservatorship is typically granted for the elderly or someone unable to care for themselves. The New Yorker reporting that in 2008, a judge gave power over Britney's life to a team, including her father, after a hearing that lasted just 10 minutes, the day after Britney was committed to a hospital for a second time, as she was caught in a bitter divorce and custody battle. A former friend of the Spears family, whose testimony helped create the conservatorship, now telling the New Yorker she regrets her actions. At the time, I thought we were helping, and I wasn't, and I helped a corrupt family seize all this control. According to that former friend, Britney's mother Lynn thought the conservatorship would only last a few months. When the New Yorker spoke to Lynn last month, she said she had mixed feelings about everything. I don't know what to think. It's a lot of pain, a lot of worry. And you are sharp, and I'm on your back. The article also revealing how involved Britney is in what's posted on her social media. Spears admitting in court she has lied online, pretending to be happy when she's not. The New Yorker explaining she does write her captions, but she must submit them to a company that manages her accounts for approval. A team member telling The New Yorker Britney is not supposed to discuss the conservatorship. Spears has earned millions while under conservators' control, but in 2012, The New Yorker reports, while wrapping up a $1,300 dinner, Spears told a friend she couldn't afford to pay her half of the bill. At the time, she was working as a judge on X Factor, a $15 million job, but Spears said she was limited to a $2,000 weekly allowance, no matter how much she earned. And among the bills Britney Spears does have to pay, according to The New Yorker, is a $520,000 a year fee to her court-appointed attorney, Sam Ingham. And yet, again, according to The New Yorker, multiple sources tell them that they feel Ingham's loyalty is more so to the conservatorship and Jamie Spears than to Britney. Her next hearing is scheduled for July 14th, Eva. Kaylee Hartung there for us. Thank you. And here now with the reporters behind Britney Spears' conservatorship nightmare from The New Yorker, Gia Tolentino and Ronan Farrow. Guys, thanks so much for being with us. So much to break down on this story. Ronan, let's start with you. That 911 call you reported on made the night before her court date last month. Had Britney Spears ever called 911 before? And why now? This appears to be a new escalation in the case, and you know it accords with what we learned in her testimony the next day, which is she really did describe this in terms of criminal abuse. She said, my family members and management involved in the creation of this legal structure should go to jail. She said this in court, we know this from her, and it obviously reinforces that, that she, it seems, wanted to create a legal record of that complaint. We also know from subsequent other publications confirming our reporting on this in the last couple of days that officers were dispatched in that moment. So it seems like we now know that testimony emerged from a moment of uh, her being distraught over this arrangement. And Ronan, to counter that, Jamie Spears has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing and says he only has his daughter's best interest at heart. And that is a complication inherent in so many cases of alleged conservatorship abuse, Eva. You know, this is a family that I think uh, sincerely says that they have her interests at heart, uh, a family that probably believed at various points that they were pursuing her best interests as they set this up. But what we reveal is also other conversations and records at the time uh, show that there were complicated motivations beyond Britney Spears' well-being playing into this. Gia, you take us through the history of this arrangement. Based on the conversations that you've had, do you think it was legitimately meant to help her in the beginning? So everyone we spoke to agrees that Brittany was in genuine crisis in 2008. And as Ronan says, that her parents were sincerely concerned about her well-being, that a change was necessary. 
But I'll just point out that there is a vast spectrum of assistance and structure that exists between struggling through crisis unsupported and entering a probate conservatorship of the type she's under, which is specifically and exclusively intended for people who will not get better. And because conservatorships involve another person or people maintaining significant daily control over basically all aspects of your personal, medical, and financial life, they are highly vulnerable to abuse, even in the type of arrangements they're intended for. You know, the very elderly or people with profoundly disabling conditions. And Rona, let's talk about this conservatorship. You describe it as severely limiting Spears' freedom. What does it do? And the thing for so many of us that's hard to kind of put together is how is this possible for a person who headlined a tour and made $130 million? Well, that's exactly the question, Eva. This is someone who's extremely high functioning and tests the outer edges of to whom this kind of a legal restriction should be applied. Right now, Britney Spears' basic economic and legal rights have been ceded to others around her, including her father and a, and a court appointed individual. Um, and she's saying, I have some issues that need to be worked out in therapy, uh, but I do not deserve to lose all my basic rights. At one point in her testimony in court, she said, I have an IUD in me, I have birth control in me and I'm not being permitted to remove that and I want to have a child. These are basic questions of body autonomy and a woman of around 40 uh, who, you know, many people looking at the amount of money she's making, the amount of performing she has done over the years of the conservatorship, I think uh, in a very valid way say, hey, is this right? Is this uh, what we do in our society when people have some mental health issues? And Jay, you point out that both of these incidents that led to questions about her mental health, they stemmed from her desire to see more of her own children. Wanting to be a mom was a big part of her testimony in court in June. Yeah, I think it's important to note that those two incidents, the night she shaved her head, the night she hit the prop paparazzo's car with an umbrella, they were directly preceded by her driving to Kevin Federline's house, asking to see the children, trailed by photographers and being turned away. And, you know, I'll just point out that at the time of that breakdown, Britney Spears is 26. She's had two children within about a year of one another. She got divorced while nursing her two-month-old second child. And she was so blisteringly famous that photos of her were making up a quarter of the revenues for some photo agencies. You know, paparazzi followed her around everywhere she went. They jumped out of moving cars, chased her on foot. They shot long-range photos into her backyard. Every mistake she made. Now with Britney Spears' sister, Jamie Lynn, talking for the first time since Britney's passionate testimony in the battle over her conservatorship, Janae Norman has that story. Janae, good morning. Good morning to all of you. Jamie Lynn Spears saying that now that Britney has spoken out, she feels she can follow her lead and say what she needs to say. It's an emotional video as she emphasizes she's approaching the situation from the perspective of a sister who only wants Britney to be happy. This morning, Jamie Lynn Spears backing her big sister for the first time speaking publicly, supporting Britney Spears' petition to end her controversial conservatorship. I support my sister. I love my sister. Always have, always will as long as she's happy. The 30-year-old Zoe 101 star saying she resisted speaking publicly about the matters that sparked the Free Britney movement until her sister spoke out first. Maybe I didn't support her the way the public would like me to with a hashtag on a public platform, but I can assure you that I've supported my sister long before there was a hashtag and I'll support her long after. The show of solidarity comes just days after Britney Spears pled for a judge to end the conservatorship the 39-year-old megastar called abusive and says has controlled her finances and her life for more than a decade. Her shocking courtroom allegations comparing her conservatorship to sex trafficking, saying she's been exploited and embarrassed by those in control. Spears testifying she's not allowed to ride in a car driven by her boyfriend or make her own decisions about birth control marriage or having more children. I just want to let you guys know that I am fine. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. And saying she hasn't been honest about being okay. Saying, I've lied and told the whole world I'm okay and I'm happy. I've been in denial. I've been in shock. I am traumatized. But now I'm telling you the truth, okay? I'm not happy. I can't sleep. I'm so angry. It's insane. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Attorneys for Spears' father saying she could have asked for the conservatorship to be dropped for years, but Spears saying she didn't know that was an option, raising questions about her former legal counsel. I'm so proud of her for using her voice. I'm so proud of her for requesting new counsel, like I told her to do many years ago. My sister knows I love and support her. That's the only person I owe anything to.
Jamie Lynn also made it a point to say in that video that she is not her family and she's only speaking on behalf of herself and that she's made a conscious choice to only participate.